I know you are at your homes. Can you make sure if you have got your TV, radio, or something, or switch it off, please? I suspect Ndarezi Tent is leaving the chair. No, no. I'm not leaving. I'm closing the door. I'm closing the door. I'm not leaving. Maybe the mic. Thank you very much. There's one rule, man. Your team. All your yeah, mics must be on mute now. Can we make sure that we do that? There is it. Switch off. Mute your mic. The meeting stands at 10. Thank you. Mute it. Not yet Thank muted. Thank you No, I can see. Thank you very much. And who can see? Yeah. Yes. Thank Don't you. cheat me. Why? <laughs> yes, it's muted now. You see now? Yes. I think the reason was that, so the principle and the rule, colleagues, if you are not talking, Keep that mic on mute. If you are not on the platform, keep that mic on mute. Then we'll be able to hear each other. But if you don't mute it, then that's where the problem arises. So we are agreeing on that one. Ne? Then we won't have hindrances. And then I, I'm happy that everyone today is visible. Mom, I can see you properly. Matlo, so we are improving day by day. So the the basic principle now is about the muting of the mics. If we do that, then we're going to have a very successful meeting, colleagues. And I know you always maintain this highest discipline. I'm so, 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 so proud to have a meeting. But somebody now is, is what? Can you hear me? It is the stream admin. Was the stream admin? Yes, ma'am. Can I please come in, ma'am? Uh, my name is Shelley from Parliamentary Communication Services. I'm the mm. section manager, uh, Parliament Television. I just want to, to ask so, you if you can so, so, see so me, so um, my but picture. I'm asking all members to have this frame, to have at least some space at the top, not too I much like me now. To be able to speak from your hand, um, like this chairperson, admin. you are too much on the side. Mean? You are like yes. this, ma'am. Can and I now, please come your shot in, is like this. Uh, if it can be like Shelly in the middle, because uh, we fly to you I'm as section in. manager, um, uh, parliament as well. If you can I just please want ask the department to, to pack their uh, um, presentation before they start, they start now. They must pack it. They must not to have at least some space at the share it too much on the on the platform before. Able to speak they will do it like and chairperson, you 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 ask them to and then the side, when they finish like if they can please remove now, it because like it becomes very if untidy be like on on the on the screen on television fly to you and, and then um, the department and please well, also ma'am please, please ask them to switch to on their, their videos uh, also the members before they switch on their their videos when they speak because uh, they seem to, they just tend to switch on, the, on, on the only the sound you, and then we see SA it, like I see SA, I see PT, they do to, not uh, uh, do that. Finish, if they can so I do not know it. I'm only it becomes um, very untidy. On, on, the, uh, four, on the four, screen, four, on television. Four, four people at once. And, and then I, I because they are they're saving the their data. Please ask them when they speak, they will put it on. Also but the for now, you know, to switch yes, on their, when their they speak, they are going to put, speak. and you know, these teams allow us only four people. They like. just tend to switch yes, on, ma'am. Only I, that is why I'm saying, and then we that's why I'm saying, like I, see SA, I don't know who's SA, it's not a member of my community, it's some board. I'm yeah. only, um, because three, members of my community, one, they know whenever four, their four, names four, appear four, on the screen, at one. they must then put I, I, on the they, camera. That's the basic that we have on that one. When they yes, speak, and, they and as well, gone. they must not yes. sit in front of the light like yes. I'm sitting. When they speak, you know, they are good. with the light and in you know the back, teams they need to, to do this like. so that they are visible yes, uh, and, 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 and very That's bright I'm saying, as and be seen on television. So those are the few things. And ma'am, also my last from communication, as you know, the committee, the media is going to join the committee. Also. They must then and they are on the yes. That's the now we that are waiting on the committee. Now we are yes, 12 minutes and, and as well, um, after they must four. Not sit in we were supposed to start like at I'm four o'clock. You know, so, with the light um, I don't know, ma'am. When you we will be so ready for you. Visible.
to uh, and, to, to and, start. And, and, when you interdicted, and be when you interdicted, I was starting my meeting so and I was I already started the and meeting. And ma'am, also my last from communication. Are you done? As you know, the committee. We are done, ma'am. You can go on air so that we can also. hook you up now. Yeah, I'll tell. Is. I'll tell now, colleagues. Because, I, I just saw that your picture was not okay. That is why I I interjected because you are going to be cut on on air. I don't know, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. We will be ready for you. Colleagues, to, to, to start. Uh, when you, the meeting has started. We have already confirmed the attendance register. I was, I'd already started the meeting. I'm glad it's full house. Everybody is here. Are you done? Uh, then uh, done, you, you are all welcome. So that we can hook you uh, up now. I'll tell, also I'll welcome tell all the people because, who are attending. I've, I've seen a lot of interested parties here I, in I my screen. Also the members of the media on, on okay. and our normal attendees okay, of the meeting when we all our colleagues. I see a lot of them. Yes, the That's far we have we have already people in attendance, in attendance of today's meeting. I'm glad then I will then open the here. meeting and try to welcome then, everybody uh, who, who has welcome. managed to come here today. Uh, we are also, also meeting colleagues the uh, who are attending. I've, I've seen in the eve of the transition from the national screen. lockdown to also the first the members approach. of the media. In an and attempt our normal to attendees balance the meeting when we to all our the spread of the COVID-19 with the need uh, to, to get the people, people back to work. Attendance of today's meeting. We want to then appreciate uh, the department, DM Tao and DM Babela, you being the lead today. department at the forefront for we the preparation for this transition, uh, including in the eve of the, the excellent work, the telling work that we have done for processing approach. over 70,000 submissions to finalize to the new regulations. This is why we understood and accepted that you could not be available to join us on to Tuesday get people back to as work. you originally scheduled. We want to uh, appreciate uh, as a committee, the we deemed it proper to, to and the imperative for us to you bring the lead department and for you to unpack the 20 billion rent assistance to municipality which was one of the, the 10 interventions the president that announced ah, last week. The devil is always in detail. Like a, the additions, Nile funds obviously the come at the time when the increased demand for provision of emergency water supply, increased sanitations of public Sima. transport okay. and facilities, Sima. as well as food and shelter for the homeless. It was a blessing in disguise that on Tuesday uh, we, we we had to meet with Salga because uh, Salga told us on Tuesday that the municipalities have already operationalized 166 shelters for the homeless, which have accommodated approximately over 13,695 homeless people. Okay. We also heard from Salga that the municipalities contributed 2,138 of the 19,000 uh, water tanks, as well as 243 of the 1,150 water tanks allocated across all the provinces. The issue of the contamination, disinfection, and sanitizing and cleaning of municipal public spaces is also ongoing. So you'll recall that municipalities are using their limited resources okay. uh, to do this job. So I think with the additional stimulus funding, what which is kicking now at the start of the it's Mama going to start start it which is kick starting on the first of the uh, july 2020 yeah, okay, i think it will assist the municipality a long way we can't see the uh, person however as a Chair, committee uh, can you see DMs, the now? we are concerned that the problems experienced no, with Sarg, i can see experience the with the distribution of food parcels okay, uh, which we also raised with a uh, salga on tuesday uh, raise, we are raising the same question around the rollout also of water tanks. I can see Members are, are also concerned and that there is a breaking. delivery of fewer water tank tanks than promised Chair, or other one? tanks that are not yes, dispensing are any water. And I request Even on the sanitation you front, you we are, are not sure the whether the procured sanitizers are actually reaching their intended beneficiaries. So, as a committee, 
we, we yes, need to be vigilant to, to complex in our exercise of oversight in order to ensure that municipalities do not divert the additional uh, funding for purposes other than those that are intended to. The, the uh, the Mr. Kuno, the and we want to, raise, Mahoya, we want to note uh, Deputy you, Minister's the appointment of the new DG, Mrs. Williamson. Can I, can I do my last we want to welcome can this can development and trust that a uh, vast experience in the public and private sector will assist tremendously in leading the department's administration towards the greater financial accountability and improved audit outcomes. Uh, DM Tau, I think it's your time to take us through the briefing. Over to you, DM. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair, and good afternoon to the Honorable Members, and thanks for the opportunity to present. In fact, you are uh, the duty has joined us very in the meeting and, and today, so she will speak just after me uh, before we get to the presentation. Uh, so uh, it's the, a great opportunity to introduce the, the, the duty, but she will speak immediately after I've done the introductory remark. Chairperson, I think I should again? state that uh, the presentation was made to this afternoon, Can someone who's sharing the presentation that could be for now? Yes, that could be in place uh, for the purpose of. Uh Okay. Of, uh, okay. And in the meantime, can you ask yourself and the in this regard, Honorable members, we are starting now with the meeting. We make contributions to this discussion. Uh, can we remove them? This thing is going to go on MM. Can, can somebody remove this presentation? We, we are not going to see the change. But who's doing it? Who's put it and on? And other partners, departments, or sister departments. But we think that engaging the portfolio committee is also very important to the extent that we can take the ideas and use of the members we are all, as we prefer. It's also uh, important Jefferson, to state that uh, the allocation that has been mm -hmm. directed at local government oh. and the entire now, stimulus and you package can start. needs to when be presented ready, to parliament for purposes of appropriation. So what we are but discussing is not the same person. I hear my okay. local government, uh, but I not really see, discussing resources see. that have already been transferred to local government. So the ideas we're putting together towards uh, implementation at the point at which we would have received uh, confirmation from Parliament at the moment is appropriate. Him, um, in this we regard, we are looking at because the, how the, the money will TV then be allocated are for us. I don't know, uh, you'll based on the need and the presentations. We'll go through that. Um, and there are a number of things that we are considering of, uh, uh, amongst others is the reality that the uh, municipalities are currently struggling with revenue, so that's a particularly important concern. Uh, payment level set too significantly, which is impacting on cash flows in municipalities. And of course, there is the anticipated slow business activity, including reduced demand, that will place pressure on municipalities, which then means that even from rates and service charges, there would be a, a reduction, or at least we're anticipating a reduction in revenue to local government. There is also the reality that as a result of um, the downgrade of sovereign, Morning, the country everybody. downgrade of uh, the credit rating to sub-investment rate, okay. this has meant that municipalities, uh, Morning, most okay. municipalities that are okay. currently uh, My name is Bongi, have I'm also had a downgrade the on their credit the rating, which has impacted on the cost of borrowing. Uh, and this is a joint are doing um, an assessment as committee meeting what the implications the are and what possible solutions would be. You would know that the many NCOP, of our municipalities in particular and we are having this meeting active in um, the debt capital market where we have asked the Department of Basic Education of their, uh, to brief us. Capital budget from the market. What so is happening in the department with regard to COVID-19? Uh, and as far as I know, 
that is the only item that we have on the agenda is to get a briefing from the from the department which will be i i know it's it's led by by dm now um i remember we received a, a an apology from the minister that she, uh, she's attending the the, the command uh, council meeting but it's something so that uh, without wasting any time, I will just give the honourable chair uh, of the NCOP to, to just do it as well. And immediately after that, the, I would ask the, the secretaries to do the roll call of the, the meeting so that we can continue with the apologies and the get to the briefing as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Uh, or to be able to manage their cash flows, uh, uh, you, particularly as grants come in um, periodically. So those are some of the issues that we're looking at. And that's on the revenue side. The expenditure side, there's also the pressure that has been placed by the declaration um, of a national disaster. Welcome, Minister, and welcome to the whole And community. demands that have been placed on local government. Our and countries some of these demands include, uh, uh, for example, when the national disaster was declared, and some of these demands include, for example, when the national disaster was declared, with regard to COVID-19, there was a requirement that on communities, on families, on society as a whole, find the resources to be able to create shelter for homeless. Municipalities have allocated the resources towards food in certain instances to complement what the provincial and national government are doing. They've got to procure personal protective equipment to procure sanitizers. So there's been a shift in the sort of Minister, and expenditure patterns in local government, and there's also a particular on the The last point I would make is that the presentation is to play oversight. The stimulus package itself is one of the solutions that we have with regard to local government. We have allocated amongst other from the disaster relief grant resources to local government to be able to ascend the disaster. So we've also Allowed. Thank you very Going much. Can we get the secretary to do uh, can read the roll call? Infrastructure grants. So grants such as uh, the municipal uh, uh, grant uh, uh, and the metropolitan uh, municipal uh, 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 urban settlement uh, 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 can I please provisions made for them to repurpose these grants, which would help them mute. mitigate the impact please of COVID, but also deal with some of the we other are problems a lot of disturbance. that they are confronting. Jefferson, and last Committee on Basic Education. We have also I have in attendance uh, uh, Chairperson Honourable Gugawa, I have Honourable Atman, which will be done on the basis Mora of Tesla. expenditure that has been incurred Sarabella as Machete. a result of COVID. I have you would know that uh, Van der Waal. many of the municipalities have, have not been King. able to, I have to uh, amend Honourable their Honourable budget, Kenneth so they haven't done Honourable a midterm Bosch review of their budget, so they'll have to do an end of term review, and we have done that to enable municipalities to continue to spend. I did say the last, but the point that you had raised with me earlier, Honourable Chair, is that uh, we are currently working on directions with regard to how municipalities have to engage with the, the ITP and budget processes, taking into account the lockdown. So we should be coming back fairly soon with a set of directions on what should be done in relation to the legislative requirements uh, for the processing of integrated development plans and budgets. Um, and at that point, we would also uh, want to present um, a uh, to present to the committee those directions with regards to how municipalities should handle um, their ITP and budget processes. On that note, Honorable Chair, may I introduce Ms. Avro, our new DG. Uh, brand new, she's a few days in office, started on Friday, literally, and she's hit the ground running. May I introduce Ms. Ms. Avro Williamson, but the presentation is actually be done. Uh, by officials in the department, including, of course, matters in relation to regulations that you had, requ that you had requested us to present. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Okay, good afternoon. You're welcome. Yes, good afternoon, Chairperson of Polo Portfolio Committee and to the members. 
I just want to say thank you so much for the welcome. And I'm indeed looking forward to working with the portfolio committee. Gigi, can I interject you? Sure. Yeah, people, Gigi, Gigi. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I'm interjecting you. There are people whose mics are on. They are disrupting your your you you are speaking. Can I please plead with everybody whose mic is on to switch it off, please? I'll call people by names not so long here because I can see whose mic is on. Ash, <laughs> can you switch over your mic? And the others. Mpumza, can you switch over your mic? Sure. Switch over your mic. Switch your mic. Mute it. It's not muted. Yes, DG, you can proceed. My apologies. Proceed. No, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, it was just to say good afternoon to you, Chair, and to the portfolio committee members. And also just to say thank you for the welcome. And also that I'm looking forward to working with the portfolio committee. And I would keep it brief. And I'd like to just introduce uh, Mulelo Sigaba. Uh, he will I be think there's a problem with the, with the DG there. Because when she's speaking, there's an echo. Miss Chairperson was here. It's yours that has got an echo. DG? DG? Your system is a, Can you get it attended to, please? Okay, we've sorted a chair. Is that better? Okay, so... DG, in fact... DG, I suspect your TV is on. Did you switch it off? Yeah, yeah, it's off. Yes, it's off, Chair. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a lot better now. No, it was just to say thank you so much, Chairperson, for the welcome. Uh, and just to also say that uh, I'm looking forward to working with the Portfolio Committee and its members. And I just thought it would be appropriate for me to then say that we have our Chief Director from Municipal Finance who will be uh, proceeding with the presentation for the department, and his name is Mbulelo Sigaba. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we proceed? Yes. Mbulelo, can you proceed? Yes, Honorable Chair. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Honorable Chair? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, all of you. We are waiting for you. By now, your presentation should have been loaded on the screen because you knew you were going to speak. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the same study from last night. You will be doing it. Uh, yes. Chair. yes. Proceed. I'll flight it. I'll flight it just now, Chair. Okay. Bulelo, in the meantime, you can be proceeding. We we receive the presentation. We have them. Thank you, thank you, Honourable Chair. And uh, uh, also to the Honourable members. Also to our uh, honorable DMs, uh, to DG and uh, colleagues, and also the our visitors. Let me take this opportunity to say good afternoon and. Uh, chair. Bulelo, Bulelo. Yes, can you chair. tell the people who are standing behind you to leave you and tell them you are in a meeting? I see their shirts and their shoulders. Can you ask them those that are standing behind you to leave? Are you in a meeting? 
Can you can you hear me now? Yeah. What was it that was on? If I may find out. Uh, it, I, I think because we had also op one of us had also opened the the link, so that's where the challenge was. Uh, honorable check. I think we we okay. have sorted. My apologies. Okay, it's fine. Proceed. Thank you. In, in terms of the presentation, uh, chair. What we were just trying to do was to, 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 to answer the, the letter that was written to the department in terms of how are we going to address this uh, stimulus package that has been allocated for, to, to local government. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to get to go into the detail then in terms of, because uh, I think we, 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 we've already talked about the fact that we're trying to answer the following questions, uh, Chair, whether the stimulus package to municipalities is sufficient to cover the deficit arising from depressed municipal revenue sources, and also addressing the delivery of basic services to households that can no longer afford to pay. If the department has any other me measures and intervention planned should the allocation, the allocated 20 billion prove insufficient. And any, any other relevant matters relating to the COVID-19 development that affects municipal viability. The, this is the outline of the presentation. If we can go to the next slide. Chair, this is the slide where we're reflecting that for the current financial year that is ending in June, we had 134 billion. But for the upcoming financial year, it will be in respect of the local equitable share, which is 68 billion. Can we go to the next slide that talks to table W126? Because this is where this uh, 68 billion that is paid to municipalities in terms of the local equitable share. At the present moment, we are subsidizing the poor 10,4 million poor households at the rate of 435 rand and four cents a month for the free basic service. This translates to 54 billion. There's a table there that's, uh, if, you, if, if you can move your slide, uh, honorable member or secretary. Can you move your slide? Yes, this is, this is the slide then that I'm talking to, Chair. In this slide, we are saying, municipalities already have been subsidized with 54 billion for the free basic services to poor households. So this 20 billion is an addition to, to this 54 billion. We're going to talk to the formula. What we are also reflecting in terms of the, if you go to the next slide, uh, Chair. Through you, Chair. Sure, I'm here, proceed. Can we talk to the next slide? Page. What what we, what we, it, we are anticipating that uh, the number of poor households will increase beyond the 10,4 million that is at present, that is being subsidized, to maybe the, between 14 and 16 million, depending on the actual reality on the ground. Now, this increase will result in a deficit in municipal funding and negatively affect municipal viability, financial viability. So we believe that municipalities should therefore be supported to bridge this funding gap. Now, what, what, what we, 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 we have responded to COVID-19 at the present moment is that we have actually looked at the municipal infrastructure grant, which is the allocation that we have received and is already spent 
So we have reprioritized now following COVID-19, we have reprioritized 1.5 billion for municipalities to spend between now up to the end of June. So this money has already been reprioritized and communicated to the municipalities so that they can attend to water and sanitation related projects from the MIC uh, allocation. Secondly, we have also had a technical meeting with National Treasury following this announcement by the President, where we looked at, uh, we are going to look at the criteria for determining how much will be allocated to municipality. One of the sectors that we will be looking at is the municipal powers and functions, because municipalities have different powers, because districts that have got water functions, sometimes locals, they don't have the, the water function. So we look at also th those, those powers and functions and then allocate accordingly. And then also we look at the number of poor households, whether there's an increase from this 1.4 million. Secondly, we'll also look at the impact on the revenue, because some municipalities are 80% reliant on municipal revenue, some are 90% reliant on transfers. So the effect, the impact won't be the same. We we'll also look at the additional expenditure that is unbudgeted, talking to operational expenditure of municipalities due to the regulations, there will be law enforcement that, that has got to be intensified to make sure that people comply with the COVID-19 regulations. There's also a lot of waste management that has got to be functioned that is also going to increase to municipalities. There's overtime related costs that are, and also the upkeep and maintenance of temporal shelters because we have to provide water and electricity in some of the I think if you could look for NENS, what has happened uh, at uh, Nazarek, this, this new home, I mean, as, as municipalities, we have to provide water and electricity to, 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 do, to these temporal shelters. So these are additional expenditures that municipalities are going to be faced with. And then there's also additional unbudgeted expenditure that talks to for NENS, Im, emergency requisition of water, water tanks and water tankers, sanitation and temporal shelters, infrastructure to, to meet these additional needs. So we will be using all these criteria uh, to, to, to allocate this. In addition to that, there, there are some municipalities have got unfunded budgets, which we also have to look at how do we sort of uh, supplement them to, to make sure that their budgets are funded. Uh, in terms of uh, impact on, on, on municipalities, I think we have indicated that some municipalities are severely impacted those that generate most of their operating revenue from own sources, like your electricity. Some are middle, they are 50% reliant on grant, some on 50% of revenue. Then the others are 90% reliant on the municipalities uh, together with national treasury to determine the extent of the impact. What we will be requesting from the municipalities, obviously, to be able to have an informed uh, sort of uh, figures. Municipalities have got to revise their IDPs the ones that will be starting from 1st of July, whether with their service delivery budget and immigration plan budget, and also have to enable some of these grants to talk to COVID. And in addition, these, these, these uh, revisions, uh, they have got to be taken to the various council for, 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 for endorsement before then these are, are, are given to, to us to consolidate how the allocations are, are going to be made. There's also measures that we're also looking at uh, at alternative sources of revenue, looking at the medium to long term. We are talking to our development finance institutions, particularly DBSA, because in some municipalities, because of capacity, they may have, have challenges with project management, preparation support, and also looking at how do we develop loan facilities that could be made available to municipalities that will be able to qualify for additional loan facilities and also financing of bulk infrastructure. That is what we are discussing with. Uh, in addition, uh, Chair, we have already transferred an amount of 466 million rents to the provinces in respect of provincial department of health as part of uh, this uh, COVID-19. This is money that is allocated in terms of the Disaster Management Act. 
So we have already transferred this 40, 40, 46, 466 million, and the focus of the funding is more primarily with regard to protective, protective personal protective clothing and ventilators in, in, in particular. Can you hear you, colleagues? Yes, we can hear him. We can hear him. We can hear him. Uh, yeah. Okay, yes. fine. Proceed. Thank you, sir. And then yeah, we, we can hear him, but not public. Uh, can I can I continue, uh, Chair? And continue, continue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it I was you were cutting. That's why I ask members whether they can hear you. Yes. In, in addition okay. to 266 that we have already transferred, there's an amount of 250, 354 million for the municipal disaster. We have already received uh, business plans from the or, or from the municipalities that talks to where they were requesting this additional funding. Already 254 million of that has been allocated. We, we are waiting for is just the, the processes because the Division of Revenue Act is still a bill. It has not been sort of uh, signed off in Parliament to become an act because we have to transfer all these funds in terms of the Division of Revenue Act. The same applies with the 20 billion uh, chair. This 20 billion is not current allocation. It will be additional to the budget that was presented by the Minister of Finance in February. So the process now is that for the Parliament, for the Parliament to adopt the budget for the department, and once it has been adopted, then we have to also go ahead also the appropriation account. Um, I think those are some of the highlights then I want to, to put to the attention of the committee members. In, in summary, then, Chair, we just want the com committee to note the work that the department is doing together with other departments like National Treasury and also SALGA to determine the criteria for the allocation of the additional funding, that these funds will most be available as early as August due to the budget process, I think that I have already alluded to. There's the revised and revitalized budget by municipalities that must be built in council and approved. The primary process is over. We are able to dispense the fund without delay. But this is where there's still consultation that the department is having with the various sector departments. So in this document is, is still under discussion and it will need to go to Treasury to finalize most of the funding. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, uh, Chief Director, Municipal Finance. Can I see show of hands? Who wants to interact? Honorable uh, Ose. Honorable Hatebe with H. Uh, Honorable Opperman. Hatebe. Kalipi. Kaba. 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 Opperman. Opperman. Who else? Yes. Bring. Who else? Hello. Hello. That's it. Hi. Honorable Olsen. Yeah, uh, Chair, thank you very much. I uh, The first thing that I want to raise, uh, Chairperson, and I appreciate that the, uh, the department is giving us some direction in terms of uh, what support they are going to be providing to municipalities. Um, and I'll come to some of the points that have been raised in the presentation now, but I also would like to hear from the department, more importantly, uh, what directions they are asking municipalities to provide relief to the residents of the, of the cities and towns in our country. You can imagine, Chairperson, that uh, uh, you know, millions of families have been uh, 
stuck in their homes now for the last uh, month or so. Uh, many of them are finding it extremely difficult to be able to meet uh, their municipal bills over the next uh, a month and two months, and probably over the next three months as well. Uh, and there doesn't appear to be any form of um, consistency across municipalities as to what relief are the municipalities going to provide uh, to families who are unable to meet uh, their rates bills, uh, who have areas on electricity and water, uh, what directives are being given to municipalities to try and reduce unnecessary expenditure uh, in respect of catering for, for officials that are still working in municipalities. Uh, those people must bring food from their homes. They mustn't rely on, on the municipal expenditure to uh, uh, for, for catering purposes and those type of things. So I'd like to hear from the department uh, if they are providing any directions to municipalities in respect of relief measures that municipalities themselves must be uh, providing uh, for the residents of their municipalities so that they, it can make it a little bit easier over the next uh, three to six months. The second thing I want to uh, find out from, um, from the DG uh, is uh, the president in his announcement, Chairperson, mentioned an amount of 20 billion rand uh, that is going to be made available to municipalities as relief measures. Now, in this presentation, I don't see any way where that 20 billion rand is going to be allocated and how it's going to be allocated. I mean, by and large, the, depart the, the, uh, the presentation talks about the money that's already been allocated. It tells us how you're going to do the equitable share, but there's no reference to that 20 billion rand that the president has talked about, uh, and I'd like to hear exactly how that is going to be uh, rolled out to the municipalities um, and, and what it can be used for. Then, uh, Chairperson, yesterday we heard from Salga, sorry, the day before yesterday we heard from Salga, uh, who explained to us how difficult it is for municipalities to be able to meet their obligations to ESCOM and the water boards, uh, given that, uh, uh, that municipalities are unable to disconnect uh, electricity and water and the credit control measures are being hampered. Um, I, I just want to hear directly from the municipality, from the COCTA, um, is, is there any specific funding that's being made available and what amount is it uh, for municipalities to meet their obligations to ESCOM? Because uh, what we can't do, Chair, uh, as according to our Salga has requested yesterday, that ESCOM provide uh, a payment holiday for municipalities. They themselves are... Uh, you know, almost bankrupt, and to ask them to go further to provide payment holidays, are, I'm afraid, is not it's not very practical. Then, chair, the, the document uh, talks about the increase in the number of um, of poor families from about 10.4 billion to about 16 billion rand, and it, uh, it it also explains to us how much of money that has been allocated for poor households, but there's still quite a large shortfall. Um, and knowing that there is going to be an increase in the number of ho uh, poor households, the, do the department doesn't talk about exactly how they're going to increase the amount of money for municipalities to be able to reach those poor households. So if they could please give us an indication of that, uh, I will be very grateful. Uh, then, Chair, on slide 18 in the document, um, uh, Cocta says that they are going to um, ask municipalities to, to secure council resolutions for budget adjustments. But none of the municipalities are, and the councils are actually meeting, uh, and many of them are not even having virtual meetings. So I'm not sure how they're going to practically uh, achieve that. I think I'll stop there, Chair. Those are the questions that I've got now, and I'll probably take a second round if there's an opportunity. Thanks. Uh, th th thank you, Chair. Um, I welcome the, the presentation. I don't usually align myself with uh, Honorable Hussein, uh, but I think uh, we share the same sentiment, Chair. I think if I had the, the, the presenter correctly, he, he's saying that 20 billion will only be available or transferred to the municipalities in August through the adjustment budget. Now, Chair, why in August? Chair, I'm raising this question because we are currently in the national state of disaster. Now, which means 
it's business unusual. We need to do everything with speed and agents. Uh, in, in terms of the Municipal uh, uh, Finance Management Act, councils are supposed to adopt their budget 30 days before the start of the new financial year, meaning before uh, end of May. Why can't this 20 billion be incorporated in this uh, budget processes? Why should it wait for August? Uh, there's something that I'm missing there. Can I just get an understanding and clarity in, in, in that aspect? Because it seems to me uh, uh, we're not uh, treating this matter with the agency it deserves. I understand the, the, the protocol and uh, uh, approval that it requires, but we're in the national state of disaster. So it needs to be treated as such. Secondly, on Tuesday, uh, Honorable Chair, Salga reported to us uh, that uh, a population of about 3 million does not have access to water. Hence, the current intervention of water tankers and, and tanks, which is short term in its nature. However, this has created uh, an expectation to communities who are benefiting from this intervention that this will be long term. And in terms of SALGA, the current intervention, which is short term, it's not sustainable and it's expensive. Uh, I'd like to get an understanding. Uh, what is the view or uh, uh, how is this stimulus package uh, going to be used into resolving this current uh, predicament? Because we cannot continue spending billions which are going to be short term. Uh, what then happened after uh, um, COVID-19? Water is life and it plays a pivotal role in, in, in fighting this uh, uh, pandemic. So like we, we, we did not get a sense or an understanding how is this 20 billion going to be used in making sure that we address uh, this uh, unfortunate expectation that has been created that our communities will receive water in, 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 in a, a long term even after the COVID-19? Those are my two questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Firstly, I would like to welcome DG. Kalipi, where are you? Honorable Kalipi. Colleagues, can you hear? Chair, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, okay, there, there seemed to be a problem with the connection for Honorable Mkalipi. He's still so on our... We'll drop, in, we'll drop in the meantime and move to Tleza. Honorable Tleza. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a full-pointed questions, Chair. Uh, I'm not going to waste time uh, such that I've written them. Uh, how are you, in the presentation, I do not see that, uh, how you are going to cap the stim stimulus from ending up in hands of a middleman and external suppliers. How is that relationship uh, going to pan out in terms of the allocation of the of, of the of the of the stimulus. Uh, number two, in the same question, the districts and the province, because chair, I'm worried about the paternal relationship that they they might have in terms of allocating the necessary uh, 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 allocations to to municipalities, particularly when it comes to rural municipalities. Uh, it, is the district going to get uh, some share in the stimulus uh, and for what services? What will be, what will it be using it for? And uh, because the district uh, in the in the in 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 the in the communities has not done much impact. Uh, the case in point being the Emma Cousin local municipalities. 
in terms of, of providing uh, even the PPEs and so forth. Number, number, number two, Chair. Number two, Chair. If the stimulus emanates as a result of COVID-19 and intended to assist the underserved municipalities and communities, why is it that there must be a long process uh, in terms of uh, uh, allocation of the funds to the municipalities in general. Why, why doesn't the, the national uh, send the municipalities, given the monitoring systems at the municipal level, to, 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 to where it's needed, the communities themselves, uh, instead of uh, the, the, the kind of uh, 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 allocations and the, and the processes that that uh, that will be followed there. The last one, chair, will relate to bearing in mind that a number of in interventions have been made in municipalities. What turnaround strategies would the stimulus package seek to achieve? What is the time frame for this turnaround? And what function, what functionalities and capabilities are you envisaging? Thank you, Chair. I'm back, Chairperson. I could see that I've even noted you. Can you proceed now? Honorable Kalipi? I don't know. I don't, don't know what I said, then, Chair, but uh, we had a cutoff. I was just welcoming the DG. Uh, the new DG, and, and then I also wanted to say that thanks to the acting DG who took care of the department when we DG left, yeah. and I also <laughs> want to align myself with the previous speakers to say that the presentation does not do the justification. We wanted to know specifically about the 20 billion rent. We appreciate the depth of the presentation whereby we are told what are the processes on a normal budgeting system of the municipalities. But the committee is only interested specifically on this 20 billion. That is one point, Chairperson. And why I'm still appreciating that they took their time to tell us about things that it's, it's, it's a normal working of the municipalities. They also didn't paint a clear picture. When Salga was in, in, in front of Cocta on Tuesday, we also asked Salga to say that, in fact, the, the presentation must start by telling us to paint a picture of which municipalities are functional and which municipalities are dysfunctional. That one will also help us to have a way forward in terms of how to, to use this 20 billion. I'm saying this, Chairperson, because in one of the pages of the presentation, the department is also speak about uh, the, 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 the transfer, the direct transfer of funds, saying that if the local municipality does not have a capacity, the district will take over. If the district does not have a capacity, the, the, the province will take over. But we know for a fact that most of the municipalities are dysfunctional. For instance, let's say, let's Let's go to Northwest. Northwest, what is the department saying when it says that uh, the department, the province will take over from the district in the case of Northwest? So that picture, we always have to get it from the department side. We must not put things under the carpet if we want to make sure that this money is spent correctly. There is one. And in the department, uh, did not even elaborate on the fact of accountability, anti-corruption, and monitoring. Uh, while they also, on their presentation, they announced the intervention, they called economic responses. When they talk about interventions such as cooperatives, SSMEs, um, which will be biased to women. We have a history of those interventions. 
EPWP. We know that EPWP, and we have been complaining about the CWP. And even the minister commented on the CWP as well. So if they are coming to tell us that some of the intervention will also border to those things that we still have questions, not answers, it does not help us just to understand how this 20 billion will be uh, used, the issue of corruption, Chairperson. Secondly, now, they said on the presentation, we must also assist them. I mean, we must also have an input as a committee, as a way forward. Yes, indeed, we must as committee, we must not able to just uh, to question everything they come with the department, but we must also uh, contribute uh, to, 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 to this uh, a particular 20 billion that is going to be spent in terms of COVID-19. But having said that, Chairperson, I think the department must also tell us in the meantime, because what I understand as a citizen of Etequini, Chairperson, we don't get bills or electricity bills, and I think it's because of COVID-19. Uh, workers are at home, they're not working. But there is no plan, there's no communication in terms of when are we going to get those bills as citizens. I hope it's happening, and I think it's happening in the, in the whole country. And my fear is that if there's no clear plan, there's no clear communication between the citizens, there will be huge bills after the COVID-19. Instead of municipalities to establish a communication between citizens and municipalities to say that out of this 10.4 million houses that we know that are poor household and we think that the number will increase to 16 million. How are they going to get exactly that one? So there is no clear communication between the citizens and we think that this billion we will also help in that regard. But if there's no plans in terms of this, we must also the department to go and check with uh, uh, on the issue of uh, those municipalities that are struggling. I don't know if uh, I got it wrong, but the department clarify the, D the DPSA, the role of the DPSA. Uh, are we suggesting that this 20 billion, as per the presentation of the department, is not enough? So they are, so they are going to look at the aspects as per the document, or they are not, because I can't understand where does the DPSA is, it, 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 where does it come from from this one? And um, also on the issue of that funds will be available on August, I think Honorable uh, Hade will also touch on that. The March, April, May, June, director saying that it's because of the budgetary processes. But as the uh, Honorable says, I was alluding to the fact that, but I mean, we are in a disaster. So we can't work as normal. If we are going to avail these funds five months or six months later, what does that mean in the meantime while people are, are suffering? What is, the plan, what is the plan in place for now? Because that five months will be very too late for the intervention. In fact, the department will come back to say 20 billion, it is 20 billion, or the money that has been allocated to assist in the situation is not enough because there'll be a huge gap between now and in, uh, regarding the recommendations and the contribution, we'll come back to person as members of the committee, but we need those clarities for now. Thank you. The next person is Honorable Mamkize. 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 Do I pass? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The phone was freezing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! For the face. I guess. I, I, I. Oh. Okay. Mamkize, can we proceed yes. with your questions, please? Okay, Chaperson, I'm just sorting out you the mess. Sorry. Should I pass you to you'll come later? 
No, I'm okay now. So. We can't see you. You can't see me also? Okay. Now we can see you now. Okay. Chairperson Sine, uh, let me join the chorus of my colleagues to say, welcome to the DC. And also thank for the active DG uh, who, who was not uh, who was with us here until the department is here where you where we are now. And uh, <clears throat> Chair, I am I'm I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, uh, confused. There are many monies here, billions and billions and millions. And uh, what I want to know, Chairperson, about all these billions and billions. And also, Chair, big, I want to be concerned about my previous speakers who say we wanted to know about the, the money that must go to the, the local municipalities because they are the ones that are on the ground and they are on the, on the, next to the people. We wanted to know how much, and I think the department must make, tell us clearly uh, how much. Uh, money per municipality because I don't think this 54 billion is for one municipality or 20 billion is for one. I thought maybe the it will be just uh, differentiated according to municipalities. But you must know, we need to know how much will be allocated for. Let, let me let me make an example about the municipality that they have a problem, like Post and Johns. Where people are staying with a, um, a sewage every day, they're in the sewage. People in the in Ponds and Johns. I wa we we must know how much uh, uh, money will be allocated for Ponds and Johns, and uh, also the MP in Liborte, Eastern Cape. Also, how much money that will be allocated that municipality? Because when the cutting edge was um, interviewing the mayor the mayor was just uh, speaking as if that is a business as usual and there's no money to, to the people to stay uh, like that and it, it is not uh, correct to us to be here in a party when we are talking with the, uh, uh, our people they are telling us their problem but we are not uh, helping them about their problem it cannot be correct to say in 26 years in the democracy. We still have people who are drinking water with donkeys, who, who are drinking water with a, a, cow, a, 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 a cows, and uh, they don't even have a bridge to cross the river. In these 26 years in the democracy, but the municipalities, they have been allocated those videos and videos, they must clarify. The, the department must tell us what is their plan to monitor all these billions and millions to these municipalities so, so that they cannot mess up in them to the, to the small and other things that done to give our people the things that is the need to them. Because to have a bridge is the need to. to to stay in the a, 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 a clean environment is the need. So I think the department must tell us their plan, as the, my colleagues say. They must tell us about their plan in this amount that they, have gone to, uh, they are allocating to uh, all these municipalities. Because uh, I, I, I'm not happy about the, uh, a, 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 a man who's staying in Pine Town, Staffel Corp. Utulan said, who's staying in the way that he, even uh, um, uh, any, uh, no one can stay in that in that in that place where Tulan is staying. I want to uh, to to to. This is why I'm saying I want the department to tell us about their, their plan, the their plan, the monitoring of the money. Who when they are sending money to the municipality. What is their plan to monitor and evaluate what is the what is the money doing? If because if there is a counselor in a tougher government end, why Tulan is, is still staying in the in Galola Soba <coughs> selling land? Why are selling Galola Soba selling out to land? If you know counselor, if you know counselor, Governor Kata, he, he or her, he's getting paid. If he's getting paid, he's paid for what? 
Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Eka. Honorable Opperman. Thank you, Chairperson. I want to speak on page 23 on the issue of accountability risk. I want to know how will the funds be managed for municipalities with unfunded budgets? Currently, we have 66 municipalities with unfunded budgets, as well as those with a history of poor out outcomes. I want to know how will the funds be monitored if we keep in mind their large area obligation. Then I want to know, given the rise in the indigents, our indigents is estimated to rise from 10 million to 14, to between 14 and 16 million in the new budget year. I want to know how will communities who due to loss of income as a result of COVID-19 regulation, how will they will how they will be assisted to foot their rates and services bill, as this directly impacts on payment culture and credit control and cash revenue within municipalities. Then keeping in mind that the social relief efforts of DSD, especially concerning the food parcels, have recently been abused by specifically ward councillors. And the president said that this 20 billion rand some of that money will be allocated for food and shelters. If we keep in mind the abuses of the food parcels, I'm concerned after the burning and protests in my constituency last Wednesday, that these funds will be used to, com to campaign and to drive political agendas. I wanna know how will we safeguard that the money reaches the intended beneficiaries and that the money reaches its intended purpose. Because we know that local government has a tech record of corruption and mismanagement and bad handling of finances. Now, the second thing I want to know is on page 25. It's on the 131 million of the Provincial Disaster Relief Fund. I want to know on what will that money be spent and then I want to know, have clear expenditure guidelines been developed by the AG for the COVID funds, given the bad local government track record with handling finances? We must safeguard that the food and shelter don't become a means for misconduct and looting and corrupt activities, especially with the relaxation of both the MFMA and the PF PFMA legislation currently. I'd like to see specific oversight mechanisms in place to protect the 20 billion fund and to guard it against political and personal gain. And I feel like we're making wolf shepherd here, Chairperson. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Opperman. The next one is Honorable Brink. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think the first thing is that it's clear we need a ministerial directive to tell councils to recommence their business, um, including governance and oversight functions, using electronic tools. Because as it currently stands, the ministerial directive of the 30th of, of March creates the impression that the only structures that are allowed to have meetings are the disaster management centers and i think it's clear from this presentation other information not only that uh, councils need some uh, need to decide on some urgent budgetary issues but also that they need to exercise oversight over municipal procurement appointments and all of these other things that are happening in in an effective information blackout and i think the deputy minister tao must, must consider that and discuss it with the minister uh, many of the smaller rural municipalities are not doing any oversight at the moment, and they're not prepared to uh, connect councillors electronically to make the type of decisions that are proposed here. Second point, Chair, is um, slide 17, which has a heading called Contribution to the Broader Local Economic Response, mentions this uh, 20 billion 
And I think it's it's probably the only clear reference to the 20 billion in the entire presentation. Uh, and I think a colleague has also made mention of it. It says linked to the use of the 20 billion um, will be two things. One, the establishments of co-ops um, and then municipalities have to train and assign functions to the co-ops. And secondly, the establishment of or the uh, encouragement of procurement via SMMEs. Now, my question is, uh, does this not already exist in terms of the provisions of the Preferential Procurement Policy Framework Act, where municipalities in any event have to um, procure their services from uh, SMMEs and, and other uh, preferential service providers? Is this now on top of, of what the law already says? Uh, does this require municipalities to, to start these co-ops and train them and then procure services from them? Um, and what effect is that going to have on the ability to spend this money? So is this, a, is this a realistic expectation? It's very vague in the presentation. We need more details. Uh, and, um, you know, they must make sure that National Treasury knows what's being proposed here and the implications of it. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Honorable Brink. Honorable Chou. Mm, thank you, Chairperson. Our two Deputy Ministers, I greet you again because I haven't spoken to you for some time. I can't uh, see. So, you can't see. Okay. Oh, yes. Can you? Yes, uh, I, uh, I welcome the presentation very much. I'm but my point is I'm that I can see you. Yeah? I'm only seeing your eyes. You need to move up. Okay, okay. Can you see? Yes. Can... What, what was happening? Okay, uh, you know, I'm sitting on a on a uh, table, uh, dining room table. So sometimes mm -hmm. I've balanced it with a, a long pot. That's why things are. Uh, proceed, proceed, Matlo. Okay, thank you very much. I am on the unfunded uh, budget that in 2019 and 20 financial year, 127 municipal were identified by Treasury from national and province as requiring support or intervention. Of that, 30 of the 40 municipalities that were currently under intervention. Now, that we are saying we need to attain a funded state municipal that had provincial treasury. Mm, I think in that, because as of now, many of our municipalities, their performance was sometimes not so good. So therefore, I think if we can uh, develop the revenue that will improve the measures that will increase the collection rate of the municipalities. Because the Department of Treasury need to, need to determine the criteria for the allocation of additional funding directed to local government. And also that also it needs uh, people that will be monitoring it and evaluate it. And I think we are having a good uh, minister and the two deputy ministers the Department of uh, Disaster Management, together with the Treasury, I think this issue of allocation of, kind of funding, they should be on it so that they should be able to see that the Treasury come up with a one solution that will help the entire municipalities in our countries that they developed one device integrated development plan that their budget implementation plan is one 
and where they see that the municipality was not doing well. Our deputy minister, they should also be there so that they can help our municipalities to be in, in, the, in the form of what other municipalities are doing. The issue, the, in terms of municipal infrastructure grant formula, then uh, the question will be, how many priority allocated to district munip municipalities identified by government for basic residential infrastructure proportional allocation of water supply, sanitation, roads, and other services, such as street lights and solid waste removals. You mentioned that uh, we have received a business plan from the disaster management. I think we are, this, we are business uh, plan, we welcome it 100%, but it should also involve our ministers and deputy, two deputy ministers 100%, so that we should have a one, uh, 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 the, 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 the plan that will cover the entire country. That uh, this municipality shouldn't say, this is how far we have gone with the allocation, other municipality, this is how we have used the allocation. No, it should be in a one, uni one uniformity. But those allocation of 20 billion, how much are you going to allocate for district municipalities and metros in the entire country? Because in addressing the delivery of basic services uh, to households that can no longer afford to pay in relation to the COVID-19 uh, developmental problem that affect our municipalities. How are you going to resolve all those problems that I've mentioned? Because this is really affecting our people and especially those people that are unemployed and also the people that are running SMMEs that also they've long been sitting at home then they don't have anything that they they are going to, that is going to help them maybe to be able to afford the revenue in our municipalities. How that uh, 20 allocation of 20 billion is going to help them. We need also to accommodate all those people. And then also now I'm still on the issue of uh, uh, the food parcels, that there are so many people that are still complaining. Could you please just the uh, minister, talk to the minister, the deep, there are two deputy ministers, chairperson, that they should give contact numbers that people will respond when they people phone to know where they should go to access, you know, the food parcels. And also, uh, there are so many things that I, I, I've written. Mm. The, the issue of uh, the issue, yes, the issue of the other measures that need a thorough intervention that while we are going to allocate a 20 allocation of 20 billion and, and at the same time we have mentioned that uh, the project management unit is not functioning so well i think on that one they need a thorough training whereby they are going to do their work and then uh, you know if, if efficiently then that at the end of the day, we don't have uh, people that complaining that uh, the government has allocated 20 billion, but we don't know how did they use it. And also the project preparation support. It needs also to workshop those people that are will be working on on those on those uh, on those funds. And also the issue of uh, and the issue of developing revenue improvement measures that will increase the allocation rate of the municipality. We need also, you know, to be more careful on that and 
people, our people also need to be well empowered on those issues. Uh, uh, the issue of the developing the revenue improvement uh, measures that will increase the collection rate of for uh, our municipality. Which criteria are we going to apply in making sure that we improve that? Because most of the people have, have long been at home, not working, and then others, they've even mentioned that they are not going to get their salaries. How is it going to be possible for us to do that? Uh, you need to help us on that issue. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Matlo. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, our Hendrix here. Yeah? I'm going to note. I was going to ask you whether you. I, I'll note you. Thank you. Hendrix, the floor is yours. Ah, oh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, as you know, that uh, the whole health function is a provincial function, but they're delegated to municipalities to do the work and funded by pro province. Now, we know that our clinics are on the front lines to fight the uh, COVID-19 and um, they need a lot of financial resources. And I think if the 20, some of the 20 billion can be directed to, to clinics, it will help a lot, especially also to improve the ambulance serv services and the responses. And then there will be very little uh, uh, opportunity uh, for, for corruption because I was on a national TV program yesterday for half an hour. And all the questions from the listeners is what? Are members of parliament going to do to make sure that the 20 billion rand doesn't go down the drain? And I must admit, I had a lot of difficulty uh, to answer that particular question. I like the idea that some of the money must go to procurement uh, 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 to people in the township. It's very important that we create economies uh, in the township. So now that there is some funding available, we've been given direction that they should, uh, cooperatives should be established. I would rather call it business hubs, where people of the townships are, are, are trained uh, and assisted to supply the procurement needs of the municipality. So they must be assisted to, to source what the municipality needs, and then uh, the municipality must buy it uh, from them. And in this way, we're going to create a township economy. It's very important that we create jobs and that we create economic opportunities in townships, in rural areas, in the Cape Flats where I come from. And, and I think that's where the, the, the money uh, uh, should be directed. It is obvious that the, the, the nation has no confidence that the 20 billion rand would be properly used by the leadership in the municipalities because the leadership uh, is perceived to be weak I must say there are some municipalities uh, that uh, uh, make the cut, but uh, the perception generally is uh, that uh, we can't leave it to municipalities. We have to have a, a medium term view that after the pandemic, there has to be a recovery and uh, the president has eased the regulations. He has opened the door for some sort of uh, economic activity. Uh, small business development, they are like a bank. They give you soft loans, prime minus five. They don't give you any other money during this pandemic. So there's absolutely no assistance coming from the small business development except uh, 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 loans. And these are obviously for the top end of the, of the SMEs. So there's no assistance. I just want to share with you, Honorable Chair, that there were 16,000 applications from SMEs for assistance from small business. Only 600 were helped. Now, the Honorable Hendricks, Honorable Hendricks, may I bring you to order? Can we focus on matters that are related to COPT? 
Yeah, so I, I can talk? give the premium health matters. You can raise it with the health uh, portfolio committee here, the cocktail related matters. I need to bring you to order because there are still other members of the committee who still need to follow up. Yeah, thank now, you the, yeah, the, the, the was, small business was, public know that lies with the portfolio small businesses. I'm trying to bring you to order in that line. Anything that has come related in line with today's presentation, colleague, please. Yeah, so I want to then just end off by uh, supporting the idea mm -hmm. uh, that there must be more procurement uh, in the townships and the cooperative idea that COCTA has, maybe they must unpack that for us. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Honorable Hussein and Honorable Adel, I have noted you for the follow-up questions, but I'm also looking on the time uh, that I located. We are just 27 minutes to uh, injury time. So I just need to quickly deal with these items, then you will follow up with your follow-ups. Maybe we'll decide on the way forward how are they going to respond to the questions. Uh, I've gone through the yeah I've gone through the report. Uh, more than fifty percent of the report it deals with the equitable share formula and related matters. And from where some of us are seated, uh, DG and the deputy ministers, there is nothing new. Uh, I mean, I think there is a need for us that we we should do should not do the same things and accept uh, the same results. We are here now in the state of the national disaster, and I should believe we should do things differently because the stimulus package to, to me, and I think that's the view of the other committee members, it must make radical advances towards addressing the fault lines exposed by this pandemic COVID-19. And then the other issue, which is of concern for me, I see in your presentation you've even put Misa on the side to show that you are working with them. But what is the role, their role, Misa? The other stakeholders like Department of Water and Sanitation, Salga, ESCOM, Water Boards, Professional Institutes, and Investment and Infrastructure Office of the Presidency in this stimulus package. I don't see it coming clearly here. And then uh, with regard to the first second criteria mentioned in the presentation should, should be the same pre and post the COVID-2019 uh, pandemic. And the other issue that the other colleagues are raising, particular Honorable uh, Bring has dealt with it, and I think it's Honorable as well. Why are municipalities the Department of Nari support uh, and funded budgets? of municipalities. The other issue that we need to deal with uh, as one of the newly exposed fault lines is that our record of indigents are neglected at municipalities. Uh, this is important to be effective in providing support and relief because you look at that indigent register and their credibilities, there's much to be to be desired with that effect. Uh, the report um, doesn't say much with when it comes to how this COVID-19 will affect new development, special planning, because it is only reduced to revenue. That will be a challenge, but it doesn't address these other issues. And then uh, the other issue that you're talking about, which you allude to, it's to proper assessment. Do you have any idea as to what timeline and cost for this. Uh, then you also indicate that uh, municipalities uh, approving budgets. Will allocation also be made to national and provincial uh, departments for section 154 support? The issue around social distancing, sanitizing of workplaces and other restrictions and the requirements will also place a financial burden to municipalities, especially the smaller ones. Are there any plans to deal with these matters? The other issue that Honorable Brink has raised sharply is with regard to the issue of cooperatives. Uh, instead of pushing for establishment of cooperatives, also Honorable Hendrick has just said, this, said it earlier now, 
Is it not better to get structures that have been doing that type of work and support them? Uh, my, 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 my argument here stems from the history of the failure of cooperatives. If the cooperative route is the preferred one, will it be more sustainable to open space for communities, for example, through local leadership to decide on what is best rather than the dictate about uh, cooperatives? With regard to this issue also, I think on my part, there is a need for promoting local interventions that are community-driven. I did not seem to see this aspect throughout the presentation. There's the other slide that talks about a, of 49% municipalities that Treasury had already identified as requiring support of intervention. How do they get and or manage under these circumstances? The most overall critical question that I'm having here uh, with regard to this, are these municipalities uh, properly staffed to lead and deal decisively with the demands associated with the threat of magnitude of the COVID-19? I don't know. I am raising it based through our engagement with the municipality in the past when we're dealing with the ordinary matters that they're dealing with. And then you know this capacity challenge, in essence, that's what I'm trying to say. How does this intervention also try to address this capacity challenge? Over to you, Honorable Hussein, uh, then Honorable Hadere, you'll follow in that order. Yeah, uh, Chair, thank you very much. I'm mindful of the time, so I'll try and be as brief as possible. I just wanted to register um, my disappointment, Chairperson. I mean, the purpose of this meeting uh, was clearly, you know, for the department to give us a, an indication of how they're going to spend the 20 billion rand that President Ramaphosa announced on national television. And the department gives us a 25-page document, but nowhere in it does it refer to the 20 billion rand at all. So the brief was originally to come and tell us how they plan to allocate the 20 billion rand. But uh, instead, what we've got is what they're doing existing, uh, you know, uh, under the existing program. So I wanted to add my voice to that disappointment and... Uh, and I, I thought we'll be able to walk away from this committee with a little bit of more information following on the uh, the, the statement by the president. But nonetheless, Chair, uh, the, the main issue that I wanted to raise is that I think that many m members of our portfolio committee will will appreciate, uh, uh, you know, the problems we have with municipalities as res in, in respect of uh, high levels of corruption. And during this period of lockdown, uh, municipalities are not meeting. Councillors are not conducting oversight. And there was this directive that was issued by the minister uh, giving the mayor and the speaker uh, literally carte blanche to, to operate and run that municipality. And you can imagine the amount of emergency expenditure that's being taken place. And there's, there's zero reporting to councillors at the moment. So my question to the department is, you know, what steps are they taking to monitor the, the emergency expenditure of municipalities during this lockdown period? And uh, will they be able to bring a report to us at some point on, on the levels of expenditure and emergency expenditure and whether or not that expenditure was, was, uh, was spent for the proper purposes, the intended purposes, as well as this 20 billion rand that's being allocated to the, uh, to the uh, municipalities? Will there be some form of audit of that money to determine whether or not it was directed at uh, genuine relief measures for the municipalities? and that they don't end up in somebody's pocket like, like we have experienced in many municipalities that we've engaged in. Thank you very much. Honorable Hadewe. No, uh, th thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair. I've got a uh, few quick issues and then the, the proposal. Uh, as I've indicated earlier on, Chair, uh, the issue of, of this short-term uh, uh, utilization of uh, um, Funds towards the tankers and 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 and, and water tanks. Check. Remember, Salga made mention that currently 306 million has been utilized, and there's a further 871 uh, a million to be utilized. Now, if you add that chair, it's 1.1 billion for short term. So the proposal that I want to put forward is that this part of this 20 billion should be utilized on a long-term sustainable solution. Because I don't think it's fair using 1.1 billion for short term. So part of the proposal that I'd like to put forward to COCTA is that consider using uh, this 20 billion for long-term sustainable solution, not for short term. And secondly, Chair, we want to track and see 
how monies are utilized and, and managed by these municipalities. But on the slide of Salga, that speaks about allocation to municipalities. For 2019, 2020 financial year, they only showed us adjusted budget. We do not have the original approved budget. So I would like to get an indication or a sense of what was the original approved and adjusted so that we can see the flow of money, whether or not the 2020 and 2021 allocation is justifiable uh, given what was given to them previously. And on the issue chair of uh, uh, cooperatives, I, would, I am interested in getting uh, a sense of whether or not there has been a scientific a research that indicates that the root of cooperative is a viable one and it yields positive results. Because from my little experience and the interaction uh, 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 that I had while I was still in local government, it has proven otherwise that the root of cooperatives does not uh, uh, assist at all. So I would like the, uh, the department to give us that comfort and the sense uh, in terms of their proposal to opting to use a uh, uh, Cooperative. Lastly, Chair, uh, Salga indicated that councillors, particularly in rural areas, are struggling to meet using a, a visual a, a technology. So how is uh, uh, COCTA going to assist when they are requiring these municipalities to meet to consider budget and adjustment of budget if certain municipalities are struggling to meet using a, a visual technology? You, you would have seen even us at some point we are struggling to connect because of technical uh, and technological glitches. So municipalities are worse than us in parliament. So how are they going to be assisted in ensuring that they execute the mandate as they were elected for? Thank you, Chair. Okay. DM says, I didn't see follow up. Did you? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes. Can I talk? Yes, only a minute. Yeah, only one minute. I just want to check with the department if they respond. They must also cover the issue of how many of the workers in the municipalities are getting their salaries. What is the plan? Because we have getting calls from different municipal workers to say that their municipality can't afford their salaries. Can the department also cover that in their response, Chair? Thanks. DMs. DM so can you respond to the high level? questions that you think they are political, né? then the rest, uh, the DG and team, because there are so many questions, you won't cover them in the next 14 minutes. Can we get them in writing submission on Monday before noon? Okay, so I'm sure we can do that. Uh, I'll just comment briefly and PM Bapela will come in. And then the other colleagues will also come in. Honorable Chairperson, let me indicate that uh, once we are concerned about compliance and the law in municipalities being upheld, we also at the national level have that responsibility. So, and the point I'm making is that we've been in constant interaction with National Treasury as to when the money would become available. What they've indicated is that. This has to be done through an appropriations process. So it has to go to parliament. Parliament needs to pass an amended budget. They've also then said to us on the basis of the budget as amended, municipalities would then be able to immediately institute their own processes of amending their budget. So until we've gone through the appropriation process, we don't have the money at our disposal. Do we want it more urgently? It is certainly needed by municipalities more urgently, but this is the reality of the environment we work in. As soon as Parliament convenes uh, and passes the amended budget, we will then be able to disperse the money. So I thought that's an important issue to, to confirm, because when Parliament would convene, 
is of course subject to the presiding officers and of course uh, the, the deputy president and those processes need to be resolved um, in his capacity of course as the leader of government business is, uh, is what I'm referring to the deputy president. So that issue is also so important to consider. A second issue which I did raise in my opening remark is that we are cognizant of the pressures that municipalities are facing. And we've made allocations and or provisions for certain things to be done. So when we say repurpose the urban settlement development grant and the municipal infrastructure grant, it enables the municipalities within an agreed framework to spend those grants outside the conditions that the grants were, were provided for so that it helps them mitigate some of their more immediate problems uh, and pressures. Our department, together with Treasury and Salka, has been in constant contact with the metros and we're initiating contact with other municipalities. So when we talk about the repurposing uh, the grants, it is to enable the municipalities, even before the 20 billion comes in, to then redirect some of the resources to some of the pressure points that they have. Uh, and those would cover a whole range of areas that members have raised where municipalities have uh, liquidity and cash flow problems. So, so it is an important issue, and I'm aware that members are saying, yeah, we were worried about the 20 billion, but we thought it would be important to also report to the committee that the 20 billion is one of a number of interventions that we're making to enable municipalities to be able to spend. Now, let me come back to the 20 billion. Chaperson, in our presentation, we are saying different mechanisms and criteria that we could use. So when we're saying, so as you, you correctly said, Honorable Chaperson, we looked at uh, the equitable share that a portion would go through an equitable share process. We have then added a valuation to the equitable share that looks at a vulnerability index. So we're putting two options on the table uh, as to what we can do with part of the money to be transferred to all municipalities in terms of the equitable share formula, but with a variation that we're considering. That would also have to be done in consultation with Treasury, also looking at whether uh, certain elements of it must go to Parliament before we can change the formula. But that is one of the ways we're looking at it. The other ways that we're looking are to transfer based on revenue pressures. We're also looking at uh, uh, possibly look considering deployment of resources using the disaster relief grant. So what we're saying is that some of this money could go to the disaster relief grant and be dispersed to the disaster relief grant with, of course, the conditions that are attached to the disaster. So that's another mechanism of allocation. Um, and we're also looking at a mechanism which you have also referred to, Chairperson of saying, in those municipalities where there isn't capacity, can we deploy some of these resources through either uh, water ports, uh, in terms of water and sanitation, uh, whether it's MISA or other mechanisms of implementation. So we shouldn't work on the basis that municipalities can't do the work, therefore the people shouldn't get the services. <clears throat> Excuse me. So where there are those pressures, we we'll then be able to say some of this money should go through a process that is managed slightly differently so that the projects are implemented. How that would be dispersed is a matter that we're still considering. Can we at this point say how much? Because what, what we're working on is whether almost 50% is going through the equitable share or 75% is going to the equitable share. And we're busy working on those formulas and what would be most appropriate. So it would be premature for us to come and say, this municipality is going to receive this amount. Because it's in essence, until such time that we have said, is it 50%, 80%, 100% that's using the equitable share formula, we can't give you an amount. And we want to come back with an amount at the point at which we are finally in agreement. Because we are also discussing with Treasury. In fact, we met in, with Treasury virtually every day to sort out rules, procedures, guidelines, which mechanisms to employ to disperse the money. So we are working with Treasury, but as soon as we are ready, we'll be able to come to the committee and say, based on the formula that has been agreed, this is how the money will be dispersed. My last point uh, is that uh, 
we ourselves are cognizant of the, the issue of accountability, particularly with regard to how the money is going to be spent. And we have added there that part of what we are considering is that the dispersing of the money would actually go through a process that is a monthly allocation of the money so that we keep closer track to the money and accountability in that regard. But we're going to have to work that out with partners. We also have to be cognizant of the pressure that places on municipalities of getting allocations every month as opposed to the usual quarterly transfers of the disbursements. But that's about trying to introduce controls. I did say last point, but if I may, uh, there's a question that was asked about payment to ESCOM. The deputy president has convened an interministerial committee on ESCOM tomorrow, at which we would be presenting some of the options. So we would be able to come back to the committee as soon as that process is completed. So we can't at this point report uh, until such time that we have reported to the interministerial committee tomorrow, and they've given us guidance on what needs to be done. So on the ESCOM matter, we're cognizant of it, and we will be reporting to uh, the interministerial committee tomorrow and would then be able to be guided from that process. We will indicate as soon as we are ready to report on that process, Chair, that uh, we are ready, we then uh, request you to come and make that presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Okay. On a, uh, GM Bapela. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. I see six minutes left. I'll just take your uh, two minutes just yes. to say, uh, quite a number of issues have been covered by DM Dao, but just really to assure members that work is progressing to finalize consultations on the comprehensive uh, plan on what is it that we're going to do with the 20 billion rents. But as the president was doing the announcement, it already directed some action. One, emergency uh, procurement of water is going to be featuring prominently there. Secondly, the issue of the food and shelter with the cautions that the honorable members have raised, which will also make sure, therefore, that in doing that, we do it with social development so that we avoid duplication and then only filling in the gaps where there are gaps. But we also take note that the indigence uh, register in all municipalities leaves must to be desired. We might then have to look at it as a program to then uh, balance it. Then the third area is going to be sanitization of the taxi ranks and then open spaces. And the, that is one that the municipalities did not uh, budget for. So the money will also have to help because it's part of the COVID, uh, containing the COVID spread the, the, uh, in communities. So it will be, and later, if we go into the worst scenario, we might also have to look at the grave sites and graveyards as to the preparations, the expansion, and those things. So the 20 billion will indeed respond to those issues that the president is, is raising. However, in addition, I think the input that indicated that helping those municipalities that are in financial distress and then those that might go because of the revenue challenges that will arise where people are not paying any monies and then they also have uh, they have lost jobs and then municipalities are going to be affected. We're also looking at that issue in the plan, but the, the whole holistic element of it will come in. Then post-COVID-19, we are also beginning to say there might be program that will be started now, like Access Roads already health and uh, has approached municipalities that we want lending spaces for helicopters when there are emergencies. So municipalities must prepare such grounds, but also they are asking Access Roads for ambulances to certain areas in communities so a bit of it will also go there because it is the money to fight COVID and contain COVID from spreading. Uh, hands water is amongst the items, but also to help municipalities continue to provide services such as refuse collection, electricity, cleaning the streets, uh, and in dealing with illegal learner in the normal budget streams, but then help those that are in financial stress to be able. And those details will then come with a plan. Thank you, Chair. Let me not take your time. Thanks. Okay, I think we should end it here, DG and the team. The, the reason why members are raising all these issues, we need that plan. And as we hear you, you are still consulting. And then I think uh, DM Bapela, you have summarized some of the issues that I, 
I, I, I, uh, we will raise this area of concern, also including the sanitization of the municipal public places as well, apart mm. from the others. So what we are trying to say then, we'll give you that chance to say then, in, in response, the DG and the team will still respond to all those technical questions that's raised by members. And those are the feedback that of the questions that I hope they were noting the questions. Then, then they will have to respond by Monday uh, midday. But for now also, I think in the nearby future, maybe as you would deal with your APPs in that other week of the 8th, by then you should have then, I should think you will have by then have a, a clear plan on how are you going to spend this money. We are raising this solely based on the fact that we want to make sure that this money is utilized for its intended purposes because you might find that, that there are other people who, who will use this money to pay salaries. Now, you know, there are municipalities who can pay salaries. Once you give them this allocation, instead of it then attending to the pandemic, to the national disaster, you'll find it doing other things. That's why we want that assurance from yourself. How are you going to make sure that you prevent that from happening? It has happened. You know what we're talking about. And then this other issue to say it can be business as usual. So basically that we're trying to say is that a minute deputy ministers, though we have noted the apology of the minister earlier, it's on record. That's why the two of you, you are here. The team is going to formulate a response to all the issues as raised by, uh, by the committee member. You can also ask uh, for the record of the meeting. You know how to deal with that. Then we'll get that feedback by uh, Monday. In so doing, I think I will again confirm the presence of members for the sake of concluding this meeting. I've seen Honorable Hussein, Honorable Brink, Honorable uh, Opperman, then Honorable Kornevald, Honorable Mukalepi, Honorable Kaiser, and then we have Honorable uh, Gigi Mpumza, Honorable uh, Hadewe, Honorable Klohu, Honorable uh, Predika Abantawa, and myself as attendees of an honorable Hanif um, Hendricks as the parliamentarians who attended this meeting. Did I miss anyone? I didn't, eh? No, you didn't. I think you said all of them, yes. All of them are here, including yourself, DM, and two ministers. <laughs> and um, and, and really Kayasa, you forgot them. Honorable Kayasa is also in attendance. I, I, I did that. Ah, I did no. with, no. The second question is... Uh, so then I think the I'm trying to raise that the summary of the meeting, you know, I've summarized the meeting with the view that we still need a plan from the department on how this 20 billion it's going to be spent. That is very key. Continue with your consultation, but at the end of the day, bring us that plan as a committee. We want to do oversight that because we want this money to be used for the pandemic as, as this best. So that those are the issues that one wanted to raise. And then and the other questions that were asked by members, uh, uh, and then we'll get the feedback. Then in so doing, uh, the committee secretary can also then we want to thank all of you for attending this meeting, and that concludes the business of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Viva Chen. Time commercial. Thank you, thank you all. Yeah. Thank you, honorable members. Thank you, team. Thank you, team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. DM. Thank you, chair. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair.